This is uh, digital circuits. Yeah. Maybe. Possibly. And we're uh, at the end of chapter six, working problems. So any questions before I proceed? Okay, so we have inverters. They look like that. They have, uh, if I have an A in and an X out, my Boolean algebra is uh, A is equal to, X is equal to A naught. Uh, they have a truth table, 0, 1, 1, 0. We have ORs. They look like that. A, B, we say X is equal to A or B. In our Boolean algebra, we have a truth table, A, B, X, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1, 1. We have uh, AND gates. They look like that. We have uh, inputs A, B, X. X is uh, in Boolean algebra A, N, B. They have a truth table, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. We have uh, NORs that look like that, uh, A, B, X, and our Boolean would be uh, A or B. No, one, one, yeah. <clears throat> you really want it to be one one one? Okay, if you want that's what you want. We'll make it one one one. Alright. Truth table A B X Zero Zero One Zero One Zero One Zero One Zero Whatever One One Zero. Alright. Did I get that one right? No, Not verbally. All right, and then we got uh, NANDs, NANDs, and uh, they look like that, and we have an A, we have a B, we have an X, and the X uh, is uh, A, B, knotted, and we have a truth table A, B, X, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one. One zero one, one one zero. Um, then we have exclusive ORs. They look like that. A B X, and X is going to be um, A B or um, A B naught or A naught B. And it has a truth table, uh, A, B, X, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Then we have uh, exclusive NORs. If I don't run out of paper too soon, exclusive NORs. Um, looks sort of like that. A, B, X, and my X is going to be um, A, B, or A, not B, not. My uh, truth table, A, B, X, 0, 0, 1. Uh, one, let's see, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, uh, one, one, one. Then we have the Doug gate. Everybody remember the Doug gate? No, you don't remember that one? Okay, so we'll cross that one out. Then we've got uh, NORs, and if I have NORs and I want an inverter, I can do that 
by um, something like that. And now I've got an inverter. Uh, if I want an, an OR, I can go and do that, and I'll have a NOR and uh, an OR, or I can have I can make an AND uh, by inverting the inputs. And now I have an AND. If I have NANDs, and I want to make an inverter, uh, then um, I can do that. If I want to make an AND, I can do that. And if I may want to make an OR, I can do that. So anytime I want to change all these things uh, and use our universal gates, our ORs and our, our NANDs, our NANDs or our NORs, we can do that as long as we remember what we're doing. We the don't. Inverter, there's only supposed to be one lead in, right? Uh, no, there's two leads in and they're combined. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. All right, that better? You like that better? Did I do that up up above? Yeah, I did it there. Okay, there we go. Is that better? Okay. All right, now I think we're on problem 616. Am I correct? Yep, yes. Okay, so we're looking at problem 616. Is there some problem I need to do before 616? <coughs> Right. You can you can throw that in any time. So we'll we'll look at six sixteen. Find port one on your diagram. Okay, so here's my here's my diagram, and I'm looking for um, the forty ninety six forty one ninety six die. Okay, that's the one in the, in the top left hand corner, and then I'm looking for U8. Find U8. I can't see U8 anywhere. Um, is that U8? No, that's U9. Yeah, but we have to use the, the top left guy. Yeah. I see U10, U12, U6, U5, U4, U3, U11, okay, I see U8. Okay, so it, uh, it's the chip in the, in the upper left hand corner at B2. Okay, so I, I see it. All right, and it wants me to do something P1.7 to P10. Okay, I see P17 through P10. Okay, those look like the inputs to U8 on the left hand side. All right, I got that. Draw on a separate piece of paper a 8-bit controller controlled inverter for that input port. The inverter function is to be controlled by P3.5. Output pin 15. Okay, so I want to 8-bit controlled inverter. Okay, so I'm going to look in the front of my book and see if I can see anything that looks like a controlled inverter. And um, and I don't see anything that, that jumps out and says that's what they want me to use. Okay, so what I'm going to do 
I need eight bits. Okay, so I'm going to take a. Um, okay, well we're back in operation. Um, if I have if I have some input. and I've got some inverter and I want to control it getting to some place. Okay, I could do that and if this is zero then it wouldn't get there and if that were one then it would get there. Alright, so that, that's going to be my plan. So I'm going to go and take a uh, 7404. Way to go, Doug. Can't even spell 7404. 7404. And I'm going to need two of them. So I'll take another one. 7404. And then I'm going to need uh, two of the AND chips, 7408. So I'm going to take two of the AND chips. 7408 and 7408. Okay, I'm going to go and hook up power to pin 14. And I'm going to hook up power to pin 14. And I'm going to hook up, I'm going to put 5 volts there so you know it's power. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, 5 volts. I'm going to set it to pin 14. And I'm going to take 5 volts and I'm going to set it to pin 14. And then I'm going to ground pin 7. So ground pin 7, ground pin 7, ground pin 7, ground pin 7. And if you did that, that would give you half credit on the problem. You know, I, hey, I got it powered up. What more do you want? You know? Okay, so now the issue is we're going to bring in the inputs. So I'm going to have uh, P1.0. And I'm going to have it come into pin 1. And then I'm going to have P1.0. Point one, and I'm going to have him go into pin 3, and uh, P1.2, I'm going to have him go into 5, and then I'm going to come down here and bring P1.3 into pin 1, P1.4 into pin 3, P1.5 into pin 5 and then I have to go to the other side and on the other side I'm going to start with pin 15 so I have pin four, 13 so I'm going to, in pin 13 I'm going to bang uh, P1.6 and over here on page uh, 13 I'm going to bang P1.7 well, you could, um, but, but the matter. lower number, 8, is the output, and I want an input. So 13 is yeah. the input, and that's what I want. So I got, so now i got all my inputs. All right. Now I'm, I'm looking. So I remember that what I've got here is, uh, is an inverter going there over to pin 2, right? That's what I remember. All right, now over here... I want two things coming in. I want, uh, there's pin 1 and pin 2. Pin 3 is going to be my output. So pin 3 is going to go to when it goes to pin 1, P1.1. So it's going to go to P1.0. Okay, so that's good. I need to have a switch. So down here I'm going to have a switch. I'm going to go uh, 5 volts. I'm going to have a resistor. And then I'm going to have a, a switch. 
which is going to either be at ground or not at ground. Okay, if it's not at ground, then I got five volts. That's going to be my enable. Enabler? Yeah, that's my enable. So that's going to, no, 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 no. The problem said I'm enabling it from pin 15, right? So the problem said I'm enabling it pin at P315. The output is controlling the enable. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and say I got pin P315 hooked up to 2. Here's 4. Here's 5. Here's 6. 6 is going to go to P1.1. And 5 is going to go to P3.15. All right, now we're going to bring some wires over. So I'm going to come from that inverter guy to there. I'm going to come from pin 4. Okay, I'm going to come from pin 4 to here. Okay. Now I'm going to do two more on that guy. And I look at my picture again and I see that my inputs are 13, 12, 11 is my output. I'm going to send it to P1.2. 10, 11, 10, 9, 9, 8. 8 is the output. I'm sending it to P1.4. No, I'm not. I'm going to change it. I'm going to send it to P1.2. 6 because I'm going to take it off of this guy up here. All right, so one of my inputs has to be P3.15. This guy here is going to be P3.15. And now I'm going to bring in from pin 5, no, pin 6. Pin 6, I'm going to come to where? <coughs> way over to here. Okay, and from pin 12, I'm going to come around over to there. Okay, so now I got the, the top guy going. Now this looks unfortunate here, right? So I would probably draw that better. So that they are not connected too well. All right, so that's just a little bit better. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing in here, and I realize that I'm not leaving myself enough real estate to do this. So I'm going to make this guy bigger. All right, so I'm going to go and make him bigger. Much better. I'm looking at all of them. I'm sure you understand where you're getting all this information. I'm looking, I see the P1.7 through the P1.0. Yeah. Eight different. <clears throat> then I see the P2.0. Yeah, I'm looking at. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're disconnecting the wires from, from P1.0 and bringing it into this inverter. And then we're coming past through this circuit, and then we're going to send it back to the P1.0 that's in the diagram. So there's a wire hooked on P1.0 right now in the diagram. Yes, we're, we're pulling that wire off. We're calling that wire P1.0. I'm hooking it right here to the inverter. Yeah. And then I'm going to hook up another wire back to the pin P1.0 on the picture. So I'm substituting this circuitry. I'm removing the wires hooked, hook, uh, hooked up to U8. I'm taking the wires, hooking them into these the inverters. And then I have to call the wire the same thing when it goes out back to U8. 
Okay. Right. So, so, so I've got, I got this, I got this wire coming in here to A. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the wire from A. I'm going to hook that A into an inverter, and then I'm going to send it to an AM, which has an enable, which is pin 15. And then I'm going to send it back to A. So that's what I'm doing. But what am I? What if I, I, this is A and that's A? How can I do that? You know, how, I don't have a different set of things to call either that or that. So I'm calling this P1.0, and this is called P1.0. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing. So that's. But I have to do it eight times. And I've only done it four times already. And I'll do it four more times for P1, 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 we have to do it again to get the other half right. All right. You want me to do the other half? Uh, the it's, bottom's going to look like. Yeah, the, the bottom's going to look just like the top. Like identical. Yeah. So the, the only thing that we're missing in our picture is is we're not seeing the inverter sitting here. Yeah. The inside's not drawn, but we know yeah. what it looks like. It's we know what it looks like because we see it in the book, and we're not seeing the ands sitting here. But again, we know what it looks like, and that's why we're calling it pin 1, pin 2, pin 3. We know what it's supposed to look like, and so that's what we're doing. So how do I transition their words into what you're accomplishing? I mean, find port 1. Let's see. That. Okay, show of hands, everybody. You have a choice, A or B. Dumb luck, or I know what I'm doing. Oh, you <laughs> okay. okay, how many think it's dumb luck? No hands on. How many of you think you, I know what I'm doing? No, I had no clue what to do. No, I, I, I read the problem and I said, well, how, how am I going to do that? How am I going to make a circuit so that I, I have a circuit that inverts the input and has an enable hooked on? Okay, hold on. So, and that's what it said I had to do. Inverter for the output for the inverting function is to be controlled by P 3.5 output and 3.5 output. Yeah, so it, it, it is written in English. Does anybody disagree with that? That it's the question is written in English. Um, but it is a CDS question. So the S is um, schematic, the D is design, and the C is complicated. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all those things. There's no doubt about that. It, it, it's all those things. So, step one, decide that if I take the input and I invert it and I send it to an AND gate, which is the other side is hooked up to pin 15, P. 3-15 that I now have something that's actually going to work and now I'm going to have to do it eight times because I have to do it with P1.0 and I have to go it all the way to P1.7 well or I could do uh, I could do six on the first inverter and two on the other converter, but the ands would have to be four and four. So I chose to do four on the inverter, and, and because I, it, the wires, I'd have too many wires going around if I chose something else. Okay, okay. I so. I understand what you're doing. That's yeah. Okay, well that's cool. <clears throat> Let's hope E62 is easier. E62. Load section 262B. All right, so um, we have section two six two B someplace. Six two 
six two B. The logic analyzer shows the input waveform A and B and the output waveform X and Y. Gates 1 and 2 are hidden from your view. Looks like I'm opening multiple sections of this because I clicked on it multiple times, which is not what I want to do. Okay. But each is either an exclusive OR or an exclusive NOR. Use the logic analog uh, analyzer to display and determine what is gate 1, what is gate 2. Okay, so we're doing E, 6, 2. Um, if I have an exclusive OR, I expect uh, if I had something that was going like that, and that's A, and I have something like this, that's going like that, and that were B, then my, I would expect an output that would be 0, um, go up for a little bit, come down, go up, go down, but then go up again, stay down, um, go up a little bit, stay down, go up a little bit, something like that, depending on how my timing looks. And if I had an exclusive nor, exclusive nor, then I expect both the zeros to be high, and I'd expect it to go down, be high, go down, be high, go down, go down, go down, be the opposite way. All right, so that's what I'm expecting to see, and now I'm going to go and turn it on and see what I see. Okay, so I'm looking at that, and I'm, I'm looking at the A guy. And notice that one of these is the inverted of the other one. So the A guy, the X output, gate 1, is low when they're both low, high <laughs> when only one is high, low when they're both high, low when they're both low. So gate 1 is an gate 1 exclusive OR. All right, and then I look at gate 2, and gate 2 is high when they're both low, and it's high when they're both high or both low. So gate 2 is an exclusive nor. Huh? What am I looking at? Well, he just said you're the opposite. You're just talking to yourself. Talking to yourself? Okay. So they're both low. A and B are low. Y is high. A and B are high. Y is high. A and B are low. Y is high. So that makes gate 2 an exclusive OR. No, exclusive NOR. Yeah. Well, that was easy e66 i hope that one's just as good open 6 to f no i don't want to save that okay so i'll open 6 to f and again i double clicked it when i really only wanted to click once so I might be getting two of these Eh, maybe not. 6-2-F. Write the simplified Boolean equation at x. Okay, that uh, seems like a reasonable thing to do. 
all things being equal. Okay, so this is um, E66. Six, six. I got uh, this is B, C, and X is going to be A, B, C, or A, B, C knotted. A knot, B, C knotted. Okay. Well, if this were just AB and I had an exclusive nor there, then I'd have AB or A naught B naught. Okay? By definition. In this particular case, that BC is the same as this B. So A, B in this example would be A, B, C in this example. It's just like the B input. Just yeah, input. so B, C is just the B input. I just have to go and, and I'm calling it B, C because that's what it is. And uh, then the, I'd have to have A naught, B naught. Well, A naught, B is now B, C, B, C naught. So I've written the equation, I should probably simplify it, right? Um, A, B, C, or A naught, B naught, or C naught, A, B, C, or A naught, B naught, or A naught, C naught. And that's not very simple, um, but that's as far as we're going to be at a go, so we'll have to let that be the case. All right, back to the multi sim. Make it a little bigger so we can see it. Get rid of that guy. Come out this way. Go up go over, do something, I don't know. Um, make it a little smaller. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to hook up A to the logic converter, B to the logic converter, C to the logic converter, and the output to the output of the logic converter. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to take the, the gates and make a truth table. So there's um, A, B, C is right there. And uh, this is um, A naught, B naught is sitting right there. And that guy there is something else, B naught, C naught, I guess. Uh, anyway, um, make the Boolean equation. Simplify the Boolean equation. And is that not what we had? You can't see it because it's too small, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, A, B, C, or A naught, B naught, or A naught, C naught, we go back, A, B, C, A naught, B naught, or A, yeah, so check. We did it right. Okay, questions about that? No. Okay, so the next thing we get to do is go over the study guide for the test. We could do that. was the echo from me going. That Okay. So try not to get too far ahead.
my calculator's out. Now, we'll forget about the calculator for right now. We'll fill in the things we can do without a calculator. If I group these in things of four, I see a five. I see an eight, nine, 10, 11, which is a B. I'm gonna put a little H there to say it's hexadecimal. Wait, you group these things in four? Yeah, so there's four. Here's four here. So there's a five. And there's an 8, 9, 10, 11, and 11 is a B in hexadecimal. All right, and then I'm going to go and group things in 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. I get a 1, 3, a 3 in base 8. All right, so that seems reasonable. I do the same thing. I got four, four, so I'm going to write four, zero, one, zero, zero, followed by four, one, zero, zero. So I got that one. I could have put it in my calculator and done the same thing. And then I'm going to group in in terms of four, and I'm going to see a two, and I'm going to see a four in hexadecimal. An A in binary, an A is 10, 8, 9, 10, a C is 12, 8, 12. I then group in terms of 3, 1, 2, 3, I see a 4, 1, 2, 3, I see a 5, 1, 2, I see a 2 base 8. Uh, over here, on binary coded decimal, I see a 7, I see a 5, and I see a 6. Okay, at that point, we, uh, we're going to have to use our calculator to make it easy on ourselves. So, I'm going to say, what is 63? So, I got 63, second function, base and I want to change it to binary and I see that in binary it is one 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 which is a um, I'm gonna do, gonna do it again 63 second function base I'm going to convert it to hexadecimal 3F. Okay. 63, second function base. I'm going to convert it to octo. 7, 7. Now I could have gone and grouped these in things of 3 and saw the 7, 7. I could have grouped in things of 4, saw the F3. I could have done that. Binary coded decimal, 6. 0, 1, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, I'm going to come down here, 7, 5, 6. 7, 5, 6. Second function base. We're going to change to binary, and it gives us an overflow error. So our calculator is not going to do that for us. Thank you very much, calculator. Uh, we're going to try again. And we're going to convert it to um, second function base. And I'll do it again. Seven five six. Second function base. We're going to convert it to hexadecimal. Two F four. Two F four. Okay. The two is a one zero. The F is 1, 1, 1, 1, and the 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to go second function, base, and I'm going to convert the hexadecimal to octo, and it's going to tell me it's uh, 1, 3, 6, 4, base 8. Okay, now what do I want to do? I want to get the 
I want to get the decimal values, right? So I will go with second function A, second function C, and uh, second function base type is hexadecimal. That should be obvious. Second function base, which is the 9 key, I'm going to change it to decimal. 172. 172. Um, zero 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 one seven zero one 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 two zero zero one zero. Um, well, this one this one should be okay. Units four eight sixteen thirty two thirty two plus four is thirty six. So I, sh I shouldn't even have to have my calculator for that. Three zero zero one one six zero one one zero. Um, can I do this one in my head? One two three four. No, probably not. Okay, so I'm going to go one zero one one zero one one. Second function base. Move over to type. Call it binary. Second function base. I want it to, to give me the decimal number. Decimal number 91. 91. 9. Uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. And a 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So now I've, I filled out the whole table. I didn't think too much, but I made my calculator do it all for me. So. Can I, have a, I have a 30x right now. You are so hosed. Yeah. 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 So you want me to do it again randomly? No, no. I'm saying it's um. Mm -hmm. I only have a 30x calculator right now. Yeah. You are so hosed. Just put a minus one next to it and go to the next problem. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, no, really. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 I looked everywhere last weekend for a 30x. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
one one zero followed by zero one zero one which is an E E and this is a one 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 and that's a four so that's a T and this is an A and that's a K and that's an E and you do the same thing all the way across and it spells out retake and that's what you do when you fuck the exam so that's that's why it's there so you expect it to say something cool you know had plenty of time to make up the test to make sure it says something cool huh what what, what? so anyway yeah but you have to break it up into most significant bit three higher bits are the most significant the four <laughs> on the bottom are the least significant. Go find what it is, put it down. And um, I don't recall whether or not the test is going to say anything cool. But it probably will. It'll probably say something like hoser or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. Well, um, frequency is 1 over period. And period is 1 over frequency. I want to know the period I'm given the frequency, so I take my calculator and I go um, 8, 4, 0. 0.56, E 6 for mega. And I, uh, I'm going to go 1 divided by the answer. Well, I can't do that. Um, I don't know. I got it, I got it, I got it all hosed. Uh, I'm going to go raise the minus one. There we go. Raise the minus one. Boom. Well, that's totally hosed. A one divided by 84.56 doubly six. All right, so I've got um, 11.82 nanoseconds. 1 point 11.82 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Yeah, 1 over the frequency gives me period. All right, now I want the frequency and a given number of nanoseconds. So frequency is 1 over period. I put in my calculator 1 divided by 1.7 EE minus 9. Is that a 1 over period? Yes. Okay. It's the same equation that's up there. Are we going to be able to bring like notes with this, notes of formulas? No. Please? No. <laughs> now, I have a question. A number of three towards me negative nine, will the decimal have to go to the one? Like no. Like it have to be point one one in it? Did I not do that wrong? So we aren't allowed to have like notes with like yeah. the formula? You are not in engineering notation, but 1.182 times 10 to the minus 8 is correct. That's not engineering notation. No, that's scientific notation. Yeah, but it's maybe negative nine. I move the decimal over. The other way. The other way is negative. Yes. Mm -hmm. The other way would be negative nine. So you're going to multiply by ten. You got to take ten away. Yeah. Because that's taking away. All right. Where was I? On the screen. Five hundred and ninety megahertz. Now my calculator says five eighty-eight. 0.2 megahertz, but I only have two significant digits there, so I should only have two significant digits here. So five nine zero megahertz. Okay, back to the issue of uh, I'm I want to I want a sheet of paper with stuff on it. Okay, <laughs> the fact of the matter is you are you guys already know enough. You don't need a sheet of paper with stuff on it, but in the event that you need a formula, you ask, I put it on the board, and then everybody has it. Okay. If you go and make, if you, if you had a 3 by 5 card and you filled it up, that wouldn't be enough. If you had a whole sheet of paper and you filled it up, it wouldn't be enough, and you wouldn't be able to use it because you couldn't find anything on it. So what you want to know is the equation for problem 2, would you put it on the board for me? That's what you want to know. 
you don't want to look at this stupid piece of paper trying to figure out which equation on it is for problem two. Okay, so that's how we handle that situation. And that's in yeah, this or yeah, this guy's in megahertz. Yeah, he could be written differently than that. He could be written uh, five point nine times ten to the eighth hertz. Could be written that way. But in general, your calculator is going to be an engineering notation, and it's going to give you the engineering notation of megahertz without doing anything because there's a six there. Okay, next problem, next page. Look at that, the first page is gone already. I don't believe it. Again, you want us rounding up or down? Not rounding up or down, but the number of significant digits you have in the problem is the number you get in the answer. Yes. And yes, you may have to round up or down. Okay. But I don't want the 10 digits in your calculator written down there telling me that that's what the answer is. So. 588.235294.1 times 10 to the 6 is not the right answer. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Even though your calculator says it is. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now we're doing uh, this guy. And again, I'm doing two at once. So the issue is, who's forward biased and who isn't? So we're going to use an R for reversed, and we're going to use an F for forward. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We look at the first guy. We got some voltage. We're going the right way. He's going to be forward biased. We drop some voltage, but we still have some more because we know the resistor there. This guy's going to be forward biased. VCC normally means 5 volts. I have 2.5 volts sitting there. That's more than enough to forward bias the diode. The diode only needs 0.7. So both of those are forward biased. Now, I thought like that node at the current would go both ways, like it would go across and across that node. So it would be like 4.3 after the forward, and then it goes down. No, and it's no. On the I have voltage yeah. divider here. I have zero on this side. I'm grounded on this side. I have zero. I'm grounded. It's forward biased. I have current, I have current flowing through. There's a 0.7 voltage drop across that guy. In order to turn him on, but well, once he's turned on and I have more current flowing, it's going to be larger. Okay. So right now I'm going to have a 5 volt voltage drop across that guy. And I'm going to have lots of current flowing, not lots and lots, not mega or anything. So I need 0.7 to turn it on, but once it's on, the curve of a diode looks like this. At 0.7, we're at the knee, and we say it's turned on, but as I increase that current flow, I'm also increasing the, the drop across the diode. So that's the characteristic curve there. Back to this guy. Um, I got 2K sitting here. I have 1K sitting there. I got this guy over on this side. All right, so what am I seeing? I'm, I'm seeing zero there. I see a nominal 0.7 volt drop across this guy, um, giving me uh, 4.3 there. I'm seeing some voltage drop across him. I'm seeing a 0.7 volt drop across that guy, uh, which means at that point I'm point. 0.7 volts. And I've overthought the problem already. The current's going like this. Both of these guys are forward biased. Forward, forward. All right, I look at this guy. And I say, well, he's reverse biased. I have plus voltage there. I have, I'm at zero on that side because I'm grounded basically. He's reverse biased. He's not going anywhere. The guy underneath is forward biased. 5 volts on that side, 0 volts on this side. I'm, I'm grounded, um, forward biased on that guy. So if I'm, I'm like this, and I'm plus on this side and I'm minus on that side, and I have at least 0.7 volts, I'm forward biased. Yeah. If I'm sitting like this, and I'm plus on that side and negative on that side, 
I'm reverse biased. See, I'm going to get that part, but then back on my, I guess, five number A. I guess I'm just not, like, I understand how it divides the voltage in the middle is 2.5, and when it gets down there, it's at zero. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. both have to be forward biased. Because of the ground and the ground being right side. Yep. What is he doing there? Yeah, because I'm grounded. That ground means I'm zero there. I'm zero on this side. I have voltage on that side, forward biased. Zero okay, here, so forward on that down. side, right. forward biased. Yeah. Uh, number six. Define cutoff and saturation. Cutoff. <clears throat> on. Off. Cut off. Why does it say off if it's if it's not off? Cut off off. Saturation. Very good. On. So in a transistor, if it's in cut off, the transistor's off. If it's in saturation, the transistor's on. Off is off. Saturation's on. Some of these questions have to be the way they're written. They're hard to change any other way, right? So, um, probably you'll get that one, maybe. I don't know. It'll be hard. So, if the saturation's on, it goes up to the collector. Is that how those things work? Um, well, I didn't draw a picture. We're just, by definition, okay. it, uh, if it's on, the transistor is saturated. And only because it's a digital circuit class, next semester in your devices class, your, your transistor becomes an amplifier. So it, it, you're going to operate it between on and off. In a digital circuit class, we just operate it on or off. That's all we care about. Mm -hmm. But in an analog class, there's all the stuff in between on and off. And you can have a gain of 100 or a gain of 50 or whatever. But we don't care about that. We're just on or off, saturated or not. Um, what happened to my glorious picture? Okay, there's my glorious picture, and uh, you won't you won't be able to do this, make it bigger on the test, but you know I can make it bigger. So, all right. So seventy four o four, that's an inverter. I N V. What's a seventy four o two? Back to the issue of can I have a piece of paper with something written on it? The front cover of your book is always possible to have open. The 7402 is a norm. So permission granted to always have your front cover of your book open or memorize all the chips that are there. For, yeah, for, for those over 50, they should just memorize them all because we have such a fond memory of everything. I don't remember a little bit. We're allowed to open the book. Yes, yes. You're always, you can always use the front cover of the book. Yeah, whatever you do. Yeah. So if I write notes on my front cover, my book has okay. <laughs> 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 All right, back back to the issue at hand. I've got a nor, and I've got an inverter, and I want to make this circuit. All right, and um, I look at a or. I want to. I want to make. I, I got to have an an, right? All right. So well, you need an an. Right? Yeah, I need an an. So and I've got nor. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to invert the inputs of the nor, and that's going to give me an an. Okay. And then I'm going to go. So that's a and b. A, b, and then I'm going to go and take c. And I'm going to invert C and send it through another NOR, and that's going to give me my X. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take A, hook it there. I'm going to take B, hook it there. I'm going to take C on the other side, so I... Uh, so I uh, keep my wires apart. So I'm going to see and put it there. Okay. I'm going to go and I'm going to hook up ground. 
I'm going to hook up ground because I know that's half credit if I just hook up ground. And um, plus 5, plus 5. So I hook up ground, I hook up VCC. All right, so I'm there. And I brought crayons for my little brother. All right, so I'm going to go and um, connect this to an input, connect that to an input. Okay, so pin 13 is right there. And I'm going to bring this guy around to an input. We'll bring him in there. We'll bring that guy around to an input. We'll bring him in there. Okay, so this is pin 2. This is pin 3. And then my output X, do I not have another color I can use? Black, okay. So this is X. Yeah. So first thing I do is draw how, what I'm going to do, knowing what the gates are that I have to deal with. Then I'm going to implement it. And I'm going to try not to cross too many lines over each other so that the instructor can grade it in a military fashion and not wonder where your lines go. So I've got A knotted. I have B knotted. I bring it into a, a nor, which gives me the an. Wait a minute. 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 That's wrong. How come somebody didn't tell me that was wrong? That's wrong. Anybody can tell me why that's wrong? See this? See that? See that knot right there? I didn't put it in. So I need to put in another knot there before I go into two. All right. So I did I did the and, but I didn't knot the and. So I have to knot that that guy before I go into two. So my output all right. So out of thirteen I gotta come into another inverter. So out of thirteen I need to come in to another inverter. So is that just like a minus one half? I mean, error so I'll come into there. Well, the way it, with my trifocals, I probably wouldn't even notice, you know. Well, and I then, think. and then I would come into here. It all depends. How how good did you draw the picture? So in the first one. Like so just give up. Yeah, I just give up and say, well, you must have it right because. You know, it's something like that. Okay, now I got it. Right. So, if, but if I, I draw the wrong picture to start with, then I won't be able to implement it. Yeah. So I've got to a nor. So an, an AND gate implemented is an inverted input to a nor makes an AND. Then I've got to invert that AND and then send it through the NOR to get the top line. Yeah. Yeah. The NOR? Okay. Yeah. Remember that if I have NORs, I can have an inverter. If I go like that, I can have an OR if I go like this. And I can have an AND if I go like that. I would go like that. But I don't want to do that. I would just want to use inverters there because I have inverters. All right, so this is A. This is B. I got A naught, 
or B naught knotted, the Morgan's principle, A double knot, B double knot, AB. Okay, that was it. Okay, back to the next page. Seven, eight. Write the Boolean equation. Let's take the Morgan there, right? Yeah. And now this just says write the equation. So there's no reason to simplify it. All we're doing is writing the, uh, the equation. So we're going to go, and this guy's AB, and this guy is ABC, and right here I've got A or, no I don't have B, B or C knotted. Down here I have D, E. Here I've got B or C knotted or D E. There I've got D B or C knotted. So now I've got X A B C. D, B, C. That's a B. I've got or D, B or C knotted or B or C knotted or D, E. The whole thing on it. So you do it one gate at a time. Proceed from the left to the right. Try not to fat finger a letter. Okay. And if it doesn't say simplify, don't simplify it. Yes, you got a question? Right here? No, the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right there? Yeah, I agree. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Good call. That came from the third row, guys. The so front row, you're supposed to catch those things. We're still copying it down. Oh, you're still mm -hmm. copying it down? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Front row sucks. Yeah. 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 All right. No, it was established that. All right. All right, number eight. Draw the circuit for nine. Draw the circuit. All right, well, um, I'll start with A, B, C. A, B, C. And I'm going to need the B to be knotted, so I'll knot it. I need an A, but I also need an A naught, so I'll get an A naught. All right, so now I'm going to go A, B naught, and an AND gate. And then I'm going to take A naught, and I'm going to ignore them. Okay, and then I'm going to bring C over, and I'm going to order the C. X. Draw the logic circuit. It doesn't say it's simplified, it just says draw it. And then I, I look at it again, and I say, this is A, B knotted, that is a B knotted or A knotted. This is what I want it to be. <coughs> OK. 
Okay, next guy. <clears throat> Simplify the Boolean. Boo. Now I sort of look at it and say, well, I see an A naught at the beginning and an A naught at the end. I'm going to say uh, A naught, B, C, D naught, or 1. Or A naught C, or C naught D, or B naught C, D naught. No, what's that one with the not? Or C not. So I'm looking at this guy, and I'm looking at that guy, and I can say I can bring out an A naught and get rid of a whole lot of guys because one or that is just going to be one. Could you also take the A naught C out of the first one? Um. Yeah, I could. Yeah, you want me to do that too? I'll just ask. I don't care what you do. Yeah. Just that was my first thought. So I yeah. Think that was possible. Yeah, we can do that. We can go or C and get rid of that term too. All right. So we can do that. So now I got A naught or C naught D or B naught C. D not, and at that point um, we've done we're done simplifying it. Um, unless somebody can see something else, uh, there's nothing else. Uh, there is a possibility that a Karnoff map could make it simpler, so we could proceed down a path to do that. But I think we're, we're asked to use the Karnoff map in the next problem, aren't we? Yeah. yeah so I, I wouldn't do it in this one. Uh, because the next one says to use it. Oh, unless it adds. Yeah, the, I wouldn't you know, use a Karnoff map unless it tells you to use a Karnoff map. Where did you get the one from? Right here. Oh. So A naught and one gives me A naught. So I, I combined one, two, three things together. Yeah. Yeah, it's an or, so nothing or one or nothing is still one. Yeah. Okay, so we'll use a Karnoff map on the next guy, and all it says is use a Karnoff map to minimize it, so that's all we're going to do. I think I give you a Karnoff map. I, I think I do. I think I... Um, Actually, have one there to be used. Because um, I, I, I'm thinking I did. Okay, so I need a car off map. A, D, C, D, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, 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 one. One 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 zero. Okay, so I'm looking at this guy. B naught, top or bottom, D C naught, top and bottom, there and there. Then I'm looking at that guy. C naught D. That's C naught D with a B, those two guys. Then I'm looking at A, which is the middle, D naught, A, D naught, boom, 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 boom. Oh, darn, A, D naught. 
So like under the A when it's zeros, those are A naught, and then yeah. the ones are the A's. Yeah, so when it's a one, it's an A. And the D naught is where the zero is. So the first one's like A naught, B naught, A naught, B. Yeah. So yeah, A naught, B naught would be that entire line. C naught, D naught would be that entire line. All right, now I got two more guys. I've got C, I got B naught, C, D naught, and I've got A naught. C, D naught. So those are the two more guys that I have to do. And we'll go with green on this guy. C, there's C, D naught. So C, D naught with a B naught would be there and there. So yeah, when there's three, there's two spots. Yes. Three is two. And now we're looking at that guy. We're looking at C. D naught, which is this guy again, and we're looking at A naught, which is there and there. Okay, so now I've done those things. There's many different ways I can do this. I'm going to group those four, and I'm going to call that C naught D. And I'm going to group these four, and I'm going to call that C, D, naught. And then I'm going to group these four, and I'm going to call that A, C, naught. A, C, naught. Now, if you're an overachiever person, then you'll take, this is perfectly okay, stop there, you're done. Okay. But if you're an overachiever guy thinking that, you know, electrical engineering is going to be my major sometime, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, this is C exclusive or D or A, C naught. See that A exclusive or D sitting there? C exclusive or D sitting right there? So that's perfectly okay. Stop there. Um, if you were to take it another step, that would be perfectly okay, too. No extra credit for doing extra things, though. All right. So that's how I would do that. I would go and... And, I'd, and I probably would have done it on the other one, except I'm not going to. All right. So what are we doing next? We're doing a... Um, convert it to binary and then put an odd parity bit. Huh? What? No. Well, that's what it says to do. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So, um, all uh, four, um, zero, one, zero, zero, three, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, eight, one, zero, 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 zero seven, zero, one, one, one. B, 8, 9, 10, 11. A, 8, 9, 10. It would appear so. What a bummer. You know, not until we get done with this one problem. <laughs> but odd parity bit. 1, 2, 3. Odd parity bit 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. Odd parity bit 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Odd parity bit 0. Okay. On. So, uh, draw the circuit. A, B. Looks good. Um, Nodded. Board. X. Well, that seems easy enough. Chances are this was supposed to be A, B, or A naught, B naught, 
and the computer connected the lines, okay? Because it's very difficult to have those lines disconnected in Word, that the bar's on top, in which case it would have been an exclusive nor. But the way it's written, that's not what's up there. So, um, but I'm sure that's what I wanted to be up there. But how do I get it? How do I get the the printer to print? So don't answer the question that's there. Don't try to overthink it. And, so if it, if it would have separated them. That yeah, if it were. Yeah, if if, if that were separated. And uh, well, if we go back into Word, we can see whether or not it's set. Well, maybe. No, because we're using a math type that isn't supported by the new, new program. So, anyway, so that's the way it is. Now, if you make it to 14, you're going to say, not on my watch. Let's see, write it, simplify it, and draw the simplified picture. Okay. So, at, at this point, huh? And at this point, you're probably going to say, no, I don't think, I think I probably passed already. I'm not doing 14. <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so um, I've got A, B, A or A, B naught or A naught B. Okay, here I've got A, B or a naught, B naught. Isn't that B and E? Oh shit, it is. <laughs> Somebody's picking on me over there in the front row. D, E, or D naught, E naught is right there. Okay, we're going to look at this spot right there. B or C. Nodded. Okay, this is a D. Okay, so right here we have a C. That doesn't look like a C. No. C. A. B naught or A naught B. Right there we have. D, that's not a D, we've got a D, B or C knotted, the whole thing knotted, at the OR we have a B or C knotted, OR, D, E, or D naught, E naught. Okay, so we're there. So now we have to write down what X is. So X is going to be C, A, B naught, or A naught, B. B, D, B or C, knotted, knotted. Wait, what's that? D, B? D, B or, is this guy here? D, B, and then it's going to be parentheses, B or C, knotted, or D, E, or D naught, E naught. Or, because it's an exclusive or, C, A naught, or A naught, A, sorry, I'm going to A, B naught, or A naught, B, D, B or C, knotted, knotted. Knotted. 
B or C nodded or D E D or D not E not parentheses parentheses nodded. There, I'm done. It's a three input exclusive nor. So it has to be all three inputs and together or the knotted of all three inputs and it together. So an, ex an exclusive or exclusive nor with only two inputs is A, B or A naught, B naught. An exclusive or with three inputs is going to A, B, C, or A naught, B naught, C naught. Okay, so now I've got that. I have to simplify it. I have to draw the drawing, right? Obviously, that's not the way you'd work the problem, right? Because there's no way you're going to do this problem and get it right. So what is it that I'm wanting you to do to get it right? I don't. Start I want to mark something wrong. Start combining your days. Right. So what I, no, I want, what I want you to do is go to Molisim and draw it and have the logic converter give you the answer. It's too hard to do anything else. Um, so you give us the test. You don't have access to computers. Yeah, yes, you do. Right over there. Lab. No one's in the lab on Tuesdays at this time. Yeah. So you, you know, you come up on that problem. If you want to, if you want to get it right, you're going to have to go and put it in multi-sim to get it right because you're not going to get it right any other way. Now the issue is, what gate is the exclusive OR? And I go look in, and that's a 74, 76. 74, 86. The NOR is a 7402. The exclusive NOR would be a 7486 with an inverter, because I don't know what it is. The AN, 7432. The NAN, 7400, the OR, 7402, the three input, whatever it is, I don't know that there is one. Okay, the three input exclusive OR, so you may have to make it. All right, so now we're ready. Now that we know what we're doing, we go start finding things. So I need, uh, do I need a NOR? Yeah, it's only worth, that, that's right, it's, it's only worth one point. That's the way you look at it. All right, so that goes there. Okay, I need 7402. Need a 7402. So I go get one of them. Okay, I need a 74686. 74, 80. Just search it. Like, just search it in the file. Just type it in. Put it in. Yeah, it goes Yeah, type it in. 7486. Okay, so 7486. Okay, it goes in. So I need, I need it there. And I need it here. That's the wrong one. Oh, yeah, I need it there. And then I need an inverter, which is a 7404 is the inverter. So I need an inverter on that one. Okay, I need an AN, 7432, 7432, that's an OR. All right, but I need one anyway. I need one here. Why? Because I needed an exclusive NOR, and I and I didn't know what it was. I don't. I don't. At the top of my mind, I can't remember what that guy is. And then I need an OR. An, I need an AND. What's my AND? Seventy-four oh eight. 
7408 that goes up here all right so now I can I can make a circuit um, with everything except their three input um, exclusive nor so I'll have to think about that what I'm going to do about that and um, because I don't know what it is. Um, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to use the the 7411, and I'm going to use two of them. Okay, so I'm going to use two 7411s. Can you just put it in the ah, this is no 7411. Search it. Okay, there's a 7412, 7410. But I need a three input one. That's, that's the problem. I'm looking at the last chip I have to have. I need a three input exclusive NOR. And I don't remember what it is. So I can go and look at every single one until I find it. Um, it won't, I don't think it'll do. Hmm. Anyway, back to what I was thinking about doing. What was that? I wonder. How about a twin? Does it have a seventy-four twenty-one? Well, yeah, but that's no fun. Seventy-four eleven. It's not there. Picky, picky. <laughs> See, we don't have a seventy-four eleven. Okay, so if we don't have a 7411, how about a 7421? 7421. 20, uh, it doesn't look like we have one of them either. Yeah, we don't have a 7421. Um, Test isn't going to be this circuit, right? No, it's not. Oh, okay. No. We may not have to worry about that. Yeah. No, it's going to be harder than that. It's got to be. Give me a break, you know. Um, so how are we going to do that? We need. We need a three input and, and we can't have a three input and. Okay, so we'll use two seventy four zero eight. Okay, so we're going to use two seventy four zero eight. Um, seventy four zero eight. Okay, we'll put one, two, three, four. And then we need an OR, um, 7432. Thank you very much for giving me a 7432. 7432. Right, that's fine. And then I think three inverters, 7404s. 7404s. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I gotta hook it up together. Get out of there. Alright, so I'm on I'm doing wire now. Alright, so I'm coming from A into there. So um, A into there. I come out of there into here. 
Okay, B is going into there. B is going into there. B is going into there. D is going into there. D is going there. E is going there. He is going into here. So wait, this is the simplified circuit, right? No. no. This is this is the circuit that's sitting on the piece of paper that I'm trying to draw. But it says draw the simplified circuit. Well, we have to yeah we have to simplify equation. it first. We already agreed that we can't simplify the equation even if we could read it, even if we could write the real equation. Our ability to simplify it is zero and naught without making a mistake. So the only way we're going to solve it is to put it in multisim. All right. So where was I? Okay, this guy, this guy is going to go into here and into this inverter. That inverter is going to go into there. All right. This guy, this guy is going to go into there, into this inverter. That inverter, and that inverter is going to go into there. He's going to go get out of there. He's going to go into there. He's going to go into there. Now this guy, where do we want him? We want him there. And we want him here. We want the output to go there. We want the output to go to this inverter. We want that inverter to go there. And we want these two guys to go into the door. Okay, so now I've got, I have them all three and together. One, two, three. And I have the inverted outputs all added together, one, two, three, into an OR, giving me my answer. Okay, now I get my logic converter out. Okay, A. A only goes one place. Right there. B has to go two places. B has to go there. And B has to go here. Darn. B has to go there. C has to go two places. C has to go there. And C has to go up here. D has to go two places. D has to go there, and D has to go here. E only has one place to go. E goes there, and our output goes at the end. Okay, turn it on. Make the tooth table. Uh, turn the tooth table into a Boolean. Simplify the Boolean. It doesn't simplify past that. That's okay. That's much more simpler than we have. A naught, B, C, D naught, E naught, or A naught, B, C, D, E, or A, B naught, C, D naught, E naught, or A, B naught, C, D, E. Draw the circuit. Boom. And with a little bit of luck, they'll have the printer worked yeah. out. <laughs> they have the, they'll have the printer worked out, and it'll print it out for you. But it doesn't say to print it with man, so. All right. So it's going to be open Monday, then, right? Tuesday, Tuesday for the for the test. Tuesday for the test. Yeah, it's open Monday. Yeah. So anyway, that that problem is not for everybody. 
but it's for the, the strong in heart. Okay, delete the damn problem. Okay, I got you. No problem. Mark it extra credit. Mark the problem extra credit. There you go. Now, if I look at if I look at this problem here, watch this very careful. As I move this down, I uncover the real answer. I think. No, I guess not. I don't have the real answer there. I must have lost it. Bummer. I, it might only be on the test that I have the real answer there. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gentlemen.